With the impact of the illness, which I'm sure you can read between the lines to figure out what I'm talking about, demand for delivery has never been higher. Apps such as DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Postmates have just been surging because people want to do more delivery than rideshare based on the circumstances. In this video, I'm going to share with you five things that I've learned in my nearly five years in this industry that will make you a more effective delivery driver. And in this industry, being more effective means you make more money. So stay tuned. What's up, everyone? This is Elijah with The Rideshare Guy. At the time of this recording, I have about 4,000 trips with Uber, with at least 3,000 of them being Uber Eats, about 500 trips with DoorDash, and 200 trips with Postmates. Throughout those deliveries, I've seen that doing certain things and not doing certain things result in me making more money. And I'm going to share those things, specifically five things that I've learned throughout the years that could help you make more money and be more effective as a delivery driver. So let's just get into it. Number one, have an insulated bag. Now, I'm actually a customer of these apps too, so I order Uber Eats and DoorDash on a fairly normal basis, maybe once every two weeks, sometimes once a week. And when I see my carrier doesn't have my food in an insulated bag, it's one of those things that makes me roll my eyes. There are customers out there that you getting a tip actually depends on you having an insulated bag. And one thing I can't stress enough is some people have the bag, but they don't actually show the customer. I mean by that is they just give you the food, but you never see the bag. It could be in their car, but in your eyes, they just don't have a bag, which could end up costing you a tip. A bag also plays a role in it just being easier for you to carry. I mean, especially if you're carrying multiple orders, like you have uh, two orders, it's much easier to have this insulated bag, which you can put everything in versus having to carry like two. Or if it's a big order, if you have a bag, it just makes it a lot easier. So... I can't stress enough the benefits of having a bag, and you should know that there are companies that provide a bag and there are companies that don't. Postmates and DoorDash provide a bag. I'm not sure about Grubhub, and Uber Eats used to provide bags, but they don't provide bags anymore. My general rule of thumb is I don't use a bag to deliver for another company. I don't think that's the most ethical thing to do. You do whatever you want, but I have a neutral bag in the sense of there's no logos on it that I got from Amazon. It's on the screen right now. And there'll also be a link to it in the description if you are looking at getting it. I use that as my universal bag because the bags that these companies give you are often great starter bags, but they're just a little too small. You see them on the screen, great to start with, but I, I wouldn't stick with them. I, I would always get a bigger bag. And if you're not going to get a bag off of Amazon, believe it or not, the dollar store actually has these little plastic bags that hold a lot of food. And like the name suggests, they are for a dollar. So that's something to consider. Number two. Most of the times, it's not worth the wait. So what, what am I talking about here? So when you get to a restaurant, either they're going to have the food ready or they're not. Now, there are instances where you do need to order and pay. But uh, generally speaking, I'm not talking about those. The majority of orders nowadays on a lot of these apps, you're going to go in and either pay with your card and then pick the food up. Or you just go in and pick the food up. And they may have the food ready, which means you go in there, pick it up, go out. Or they may not have it ready. And there are times I tell myself, okay, well, you know what? It might be worth the wait, so I'm just going to sit here. And that may not always be the best move. Now, you do want to weigh how much you're getting paid versus how long you're waiting. If the order is like 20 bucks and then you're waiting 20 or 30 minutes, it's not that bad because you're still making $20 in that hour. But let's say it's just an average order, like $6, $8, something like that. You may not want to wait like, 15, 20, 25 minutes, because at that point, you could potentially be losing money because you got to remember, it's still going to take a certain amount of time to finish that order based on where you're dropping it off, etc. These delivery companies aren't really paying you that much for wait time. In fact, some don't pay at all. You can see on the screen that uh, Uber Eats pays this, Postmates pays this, and DoorDash doesn't pay for wait time at all. Now, wait time will be market specific. It'll be different for your market, but generally speaking, they are all very low. So let's give an example as far as a, a restaurant. And I've never seen a more bipolar restaurant in my life, but McDonald's. So there are some McDonald's I walk in where I go in and I say, hi, I'm Elijah. I'm here to pick up for it. And then bam, they just give me the name, give me the order number and give me their food. I confirm it, then I leave. Then there's other instances where I walk in there. They say, oh, it'll be ready in a few minutes. Okay. So I stand there, I start daydreaming about, okay, 
What am I going to watch on Netflix when I get home? What's popular on YouTube? Then it occurs to me that five minutes have gone by. Like, what? So what I do in these situations is I have a three-strike rule. A restaurant, that can only happen to me three times. And once that happens, I put them on a do-not-do-business list for two months. Yes, I said two months, meaning I will ignore any pings to that restaurant because usually what I'm getting paid does not match up with how long I'm waiting. I'll make exceptions if an order comes through and it's like $15 or something crazy like that, but outside of that, they're on the do not do business list. The reason I have that set as two months is because, generally speaking, these restaurants go through hiring cycles in two months. So usually there's going to be half the employees have been switched out, they quit and hire some more, or it may be under new management. So it's kind of like a, a fresh slate, if you will. So I'm willing to give them another chance, but they still have those three strikes. If they do it again, then they go back on the do not do business list. That way, all the restaurants I'm going to, I go in, maybe wait five minutes, then walk out, just more efficient, which ends up making me more money. Number three, laziness is key. Now, this is probably my personal favorite, but back in the day, by back in the day, I mean years ago, these apps would kind of encourage the carrier to take on more responsibility, even though that's technically not in our contract. See, we're just supposed to go pick up the food and then deliver it. We shouldn't be doing all this extra stuff. Uh, this time around, the companies are really pushing us to just contact their support, and that's exactly what I do. So let's give some examples of this. A restaurant, I may arrive at a restaurant, and then they say, hey, uh, we're out of this item, or blah, 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 this and that. Can you contact the customer and ask them what they want? I say one of two things. I say... You should have a customer number. You can contact them yourself. Or I just say, I'll contact app support. Laziness is key. And they're not going to compensate me any extra for being the customer service in the situation, nor should they have to. I am the carrier picking up the food. Simple as that. Any other issue that arrives, support needs to handle it. And this time around, they have a whole support team. All these apps do. All you need to do is contact them and let them know. So in this situation, I just say, I'll let Uber or DoorDash or whatever know. I let them know on the app, they contact the customer, and then once they work that out, then they say, hey, you pick it up, et cetera. And the customer is glad because uh, if there's anything wrong, they can get mad at DoorDash or Uber because that's the one they talk to. If they talk to me and they don't get their fries or whatever, some of that anger might be directed towards me, which could compromise my tip or compromise my rating. No reason for that to happen at all. So laziness is key. Just think, think of yourself as a carrier, which you're supposed to be. Anything outside of that, I'm like a robot. Hey, I'll contact support. Boom. Number four, use the app Waze as your navigation. So one thing I love about Waze, in addition to it kind of being, shows you the shortest routes based on streets. It also allows you to put like certain streets or certain places as favorites. And since these uh, delivery apps, they're not like rideshare. Their algorithm is a little easier to predict, and you'll start to notice patterns once you work for the app over a duration of time. So you'll notice if I'm on this street or parked here, I tend to get a higher chance of getting orders. So with that being the case, you can put that street or uh, let's just use a store, for instance. So if you're at a Sprouts and you notice that you always get orders when you're parked at that Sprouts, you put the Sprouts in your Waze app, and when you finish your order, if you're close to that Sprouts, press a few buttons, and then you can start navigating back to that hotspot. And you can do that for all over your Metroplex. And you can actually categorize them based on apps. So you can say this is a Uber Eats hotspot, DoorDash hotspot. Or you may see hotspots where you have the greatest chance to get orders from all the apps. It's beautiful. And since this is increasing the chance that you will get a ping faster, this by default will make you more money since you'll get more pings. Number five, I call it the you got it tip. So when I was first starting out, I always had like this vision that this could always happen and I didn't want this to happen. But you hand the customer the food, somehow it ends up on the floor, they get mad and then you don't get a tip or your rating takes a ding. So to make sure that never happens, I came up with this strategy. I just call it, you got it. <laughs> so when I give the food to the customer, I'm holding with, with both hands, they grab it. And as soon as they have it, before I let go, I always say, you got it? He or she says, yes. Then I let go. That way, if the order falls, 
it's completely on them because they're going to be thinking, he asked me if I had it. I said yes. Then I dropped it. Ah, I'm an idiot. Ah, and then they blame themselves and they don't blame me. So my tip and rating is not compromised. And this actually happened to me once. There's a McDonald's order and I gave it to him. I said, you got it? He said, yeah. As soon as I let go, it, says, it just fell on the ground. I said, Psh! and uh, his fries went everywhere. And he's like, ah, ah. But you can tell he, he had that look on his face where he was mad at himself and not me. And I drove around the corner. Then I bust out laughing. I shouldn't. I, I probably shouldn't be laughing. But it was it was funny watching it from the outsider perspective. I imagine if it was me in that position, I'd probably be kind of pissed off. But it it was funny. But that's my little insurance policy to make sure that doesn't happen. Or if it does happen, I'm not criticized for it. And as a bonus tip, so we're actually giving six tips in this video. The acceptance rates on all of these apps do not matter. See, uh, these apps, if you read your contract, they don't really have acceptance rates in the sense of we can deactivate you if you're not accepting all trips. Nope. They play these little games that really encourage you to take everything, but there's no consequence for you denying trips. Like, like for instance, DoorDash has an acceptance rate, but they say on their own website, the only rates that matter is your completion rate and your customer rate, customer rating. So the other rates that is there to be there. And then when you see something in the red, like the acceptance rate is in the red, you're thinking, oh man, uh, I don't want to stay in the red. I got to do something. Hey, my acceptance rate on DoorDash is in the single digits and they'll stay that way until they send me more orders, which I'm going to take. Uh, Uber Eats will actually kick you off if you deny like three in a row. I'll just log back on. No problem. The point is, don't feel bad for not taking something that you just don't deem worth it for whatever reason. It's not, it's not against these companies' policies, so feel free to decline or accept as much as you want based on your criteria, whatever it is. And there we have it. We have five or actually six tips that can be used to make you a more effective delivery driver and by default, increase your money that you're making while you're out here getting it in as far as delivery apps go. If you found this video valuable, give us a like for the YouTube algorithm. Really helps a lot, as well as subscribe if you're new and leave us a comment if you have any questions. You can also shoot us an email if you have any questions. We make videos every single week, so stay tuned for more videos on this topic and Rideshare. If you're interested in signing up for any of these apps like Uber Eats, DoorDash, Postmates, or even Instacart, you can click in the link in the description below and consider checking out our playlist, Tired of People, Try Delivery Instead. This has been Elijah with the Rideshare Guy. I will see you in the next video. Take care and be safe out there.